Hello, friends. Welcome back to the PlayStation Livecast. I'm here with two of my video game dev heroes, <laughs> Greg Kasavin <laughs> and Amir Rao from Supergiant. Hello. Yeah. Thank you guys so here. much for joining us. Thank it's, you. it's always such an honor to be able to talk to you guys. A lot. I really yeah. love your game. So uh, we're here to talk about Pyre today, which is your follow-up to Transistor, which came out a while ago to great success. Mm -hmm. um, Pyre is a very different game than the kind of stuff you guys have put yeah. out in the past. Give me a quick rundown of the general idea behind Pyre. Yeah, so Pyre is a game in which you lead your band of exiles to freedom through this ancient series of competitions uh, spread across this kind of mi mystical purgatory setting that, uh, that you're going to see here in a bit. Um, it, we wanted to make a game that had a larger cast of characters than what we have uh, been able to do before. Our previous games, Vashon and Transistor, are kind of focused on these uh, rather solitary feeling journeys at times of these yeah, specific yeah. characters. And we wanted to uh, make something that kind of could often have a more upbeat feel, almost like a fantasy road trip kind of thing <laughs> as you kind of go across this uh, vast land and uh, kind of have this group of characters who has to pull uh, pull each other through these tough situations. Yeah, tough situations like this this <laughs> trial that we're seeing right here. Can you explain to me this weird kind of like uh, fantasy sport that you guys have created here for for Pyre? Yeah, so they uh, th this is a, a mystical competition known as the Rites. The Rites. And uh, these these characters, it's something that is uh, quite secretive in this world, and these characters that you meet early on have kind of only heard about it, and they need your help in order to even sort of discover whether it exists or not. And here they're kind of experiencing a vision of it. They're, they're seeing what it really is for the first time and discovering that it does have this uh, kind of competitive uh, feel to it where they're pitted against other groups of exiles who are also trying to be free. Uh, and and so it kind of th there can only be one in yeah. that sense. And they, they they would really like to be free. They would like to return to their homes and loved ones. So uh, w uh, together with your help, they will go through and and press on. And that shot that we just saw of the caravan uh, kind of careening through this this uh, lush landscape here yeah. kind of goes back to that uh, fantasy road trip vibe yeah. that you were yeah. talking about before. Yeah. Um, we saw a, a close-up uh, of the interior of the caravan right, a minute yeah. ago. That's the other side of the game is that you're kind of exploring here. Amir, can you tell me a little about, yeah, about so, that side? Yeah, so, you know, you, you're, you're actually going through day by day on this journey, and part of that journey is figuring out, you know, uh, the kind of decisions you want to make. So you can spend your time basically, you know, studying more about the rights or bringing your exiles up to speed and preparing them or just sort of exploring, exploring and foraging in the landscape. Uh, all these decisions come together with like also trying to get closer to your characters and talk to them and interact with them. Uh, and it's just part of the sort of the experience outside of the competitive rights is, is sort of managing, managing your exiles and, and managing the whole journey. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So there, there is kind of a, a, a progression system, kind of a light progression system in place here, yeah. but it's very choice driven. You have to decide, uh, you only have so much time to, right. to uh, train with these people or to study, and they, they help you along the way in certain ways. How are you guys approaching that, that progression system? Yeah, we want, to, we want the decisions to feel kind of very expressive for the player. It, it's it's not, not necessarily putting the player under a ton of pressure like a, these kind of life or death type situations at every turn. It's more like, who do you want to get closer to? How do you want to spend your time right now? What, mm -hmm. what aspects of your characters do you, do you want to improve right now? Feeling some time pressure, because you have to get to these uh, specific locations in time for the next right uh, to take place. But uh, hopefully, it's a sense that you could kind of uh, stretch your legs uh, in the setting. And the, kind of the way it's presented to you is that uh, you got to keep busy around here, because it's a world of exiles, and they, you know, the if, if they kind of grow too idle, then they can start to get really uh, get down in the dumps. So you're, you're, yeah. you guys are trying to keep busy and keep each other cheerful and that sort of thing. Huh. So this, uh, this, uh, the rights that we're seeing again on the screen yeah. here, um, w was that kind of the core of uh, Pyre? That was that the original, the original idea, or did you guys kind of decide on the vibe and the style of the game, and then kind of figure out how the gameplay was going to work after that? I think at the core of Pyre was is that we wanted to make a multi-character game, and that actually influenced uh, both both the yeah, aspects that you're seeing here, which is you know we wanted a game with more characters that you could get closer to, uh, that you could talk to, that could talk to each other, um, and uh, we also were interested in that from like the gameplay experience as well of doing like a multi-character game, because uh, we consider it a party-based RPG, and, and just sort of figuring out 
well, what kind of gameplay works in that situation and, and what kind of dynamics and mechanics uh, would feed into that. And, and then on top of that, connecting those two aspects of what you're doing inside the rights and what you're doing outside the rights. Um, cool. So a lot of that for us is just natural. We started in that place of trying to do a, a multi-character multi thing and, and kind of spun out and grew out from there. So are you guys looking at any sort of like proper multiplayer modes for this? It seems like an obvious fit, but it's not something you guys have really tackled before. Yeah, it's something that we're, we're quite interested in overall, though our, fo our focus is very much on the, on the single player kind of campaign experience, uh, the, these characters and their stories, and that, that has always been uh, at, at the forefront of our games and is very much at the forefront of Pyre. Uh, though uh, multiplayer, uh, yeah, is something that we are uh, very much uh, investigating to see whether it's something we could do properly. And uh, by that I mean uh, not at the expense of the single player and, and also just doing it well in its, in its own right. Uh, we have some folks on, on the team who very much have the chops for this sort of thing. Uh, Andrew, our, our uh, CTO, worked on Modern Warfare 1 and 2, you know, <laughs> working on... So he might that. have a good idea. Yeah, 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 something yeah, something yeah. Like that. Some of our guys have been sort of uh, to, the, to the top of the mountain when it comes to knowing what it takes uh, uh, to build a, a great multiplayer game, and uh, though with that for us comes, a, I, I think, a great deal of respect for uh, what it takes to do that well. So we're, we're still pre-alpha. Uh, we're, what we're showing here is uh, very much kind of representative of where we're, we're going, but we, uh, the game isn't uh, coming, uh, coming until sometime next year, so we, we still have some uh, key some decisions yeah. to make when it comes to things like that. Yeah. Cool, so I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the writing in the game, the story itself. Um, you uh, used to work as a, a, a writer. You, were, you used to write about games, yeah. but now you're actually writing games. Yeah. How has that journey been, and how are you, do you feel like you're growing even more with Pyre? Because, I mean, obviously books are central to the experience in Pyre. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean writing, writing for games, for me, uh, has, has been, in, in short, a dream come true. Uh, ba Bastion is the first game I got to uh, just do the, the writing for, is essentially, thanks, thanks to working with old friends of mine, like Amir, uh, uh, and it was just the first chance I had to be able to do something like that, and it, I've just always been really struck by games for their ability to tell stories and really wanted to try and do that. Um, and thankfully, I've had more chances since to do it. And with each game we've made, I, I think we've tried to push ourselves in that regard, do something new and interesting. And yeah, and this, this time it's funny because we're We've used voiceover so extensively in our previous games, and this time we wanted to use text more extensively. And some of the story is delivered through, you know, written text, uh, which is a more traditional way of stories unfolding in games. But uh, I think hopefully even here we're doing uh, something interesting with it, where uh, just the act of reading in this game you discover early on is quite powerful because it's a world in which uh, literacy has been outlawed for a long time. So you're oh, kind wow. of made aware that your mere ability to read uh, as, as both as a player and as a person makes you quite important to the characters around you here. And hopefully huh. that makes the experience of reading and Pyre feel very active and like it's a core part of the game. Cool. We're just about out of time, but the last thing I wanted to touch on mm -hmm. is this amazing narrator, the guy who is kind of calling out, he's basically commentating yeah. the rights yeah. as you're doing them, and yeah. he kind of, he's like kind of condescending, but also like in this really uh, very flowy, like old English type of way. Like, yeah. How are you writing that? By the way, is that is that Logan? Doing that is, that that is Logan. none other, yeah, than Logan Cunningham, who's the wow, voice of the he narrator has range. in Bastion. Yeah, and the voice of uh, in, in Transistor as well. Yeah, yeah, we have a ton of fun with that character. And he's kind of this, yeah, this mysterious uh, uh, kind of MC almost of this, uh, <laughs> of this competition. And you're right that he, he doesn't seem to like you very much or kind of thinks you're kind of wasting his time at first. But uh, yeah. you'll, you'll learn a lot more about him as the, the game goes on. But yeah, we have great fun with him. He adds a, a lot of color to the game, we think. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. So that's Pyre. It's coming uh, to PS4 in 2017. Right. Great. Uh, any anything else you want to say to the PlayStation audience before we let you go? No. I mean, I mean we we uh, just really appreciate that uh, our our games have have just found an audience on the on the PS4 and and on on the Vita as well. In the case of Bastion, so yeah, we love hearing what you think. We're Super Giant Games on Twitter, easy to get a hold of. So yeah, keep letting us know what you think of our stuff. Yeah. Great. Thanks a lot for joining us, Thank guys. Thank you. Yeah. That is Pyre. Uh, it's coming out next year on PS4. PlayStation.